Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and you're looking at an extremely unusual object. This is actually a very rare type of a planet known as ultra short period planets. It's a type of a hot Jupiter that orbits around its parent star extremely fast. Today we're going to visit some of them, talk a little bit more about their properties and what makes them so strange, and possibly even talk about their origin. Welcome to What The Math. So this is one of such planets we've discovered uh, just only a few uh, years ago, back in 2009, WASP-18b. As you can see from just the way that it sort of looks, it's nothing like we have in our own solar system. Not only is it a hot Jupiter, basically an extremely hot planet, it is a planet that orbits extremely close to its parent star. So close that, as you can see, it produces a kind of a cometary tail. Basically, a lot of gas escapes um, from the planet because it's so close to its star. Um, if I were to zoom out, you would see that this is how close it is to its parent star. A single orbit here is under one single day. Now, um, for this reason, this is a very rare type of an object. Like I said in the beginning, we've only found five such objects. And they basically represent a kind of a rare subclass of hot Jupiters. Um, they only seem to form around very specific stars. Every single star we've, where we've discovered these objects is usually around the same mass as our own sun, under about 1.25 masses of our sun. They never form around more massive stars, and they also never form around stars that are, uh, I guess you would call them red dwarfs basically stars that are not very massive at all. So in other words, um, there's a very high chance that either A, our own sun at some point had one of these objects, or B, um, these particular systems are actually um, worthy of extra careful study because we might be able to discover some really, really awesome things around them. Now, what is interesting to me here is that because these planets orbit so close to their stars, they're actually a lot easier to study as well. Uh, so, for example, if we were to look at the passage of the planet in front of the star, basically this way, uh, we would be able to study their atmosphere a lot more accurately. We would also be able to study uh, various interactions between the star's magnetic field and also the planetary magnetic field. And in other words, um, being able to study these systems is extremely important to help us understand not only the formation of star systems, but basically what actually uh, happens when these planets are so close to their parent stars. Now, this is one of such objects. Let's go see the other one. Uh, it's actually the next object on the list, WASP-19b. Um, all of these objects are actually pretty far away. A lot of them are uh, very close to the central black hole, but very, 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 very far away from our own planet Earth. But as you can see, many of them basically have this very, very short orbit. The previous object you saw was about 10 masses of Jupiter, but this one here is only about 1.7 masses of Jupiter. Um, and uh, this particular object was actually the first uh, planet where we discovered um, water in the atmosphere, but also unusual formations of titanium oxide. So basically here, the atmosphere of this particular object um, it contains a lot of metal. Uh, it's so hot here that even metal becomes gas. And so titanium oxide is part of the atmosphere. And so you get these weird types of um, rain that contains iron and titanium and a lot of other metals that you wouldn't expect on any of the planets in our own solar system. Now, um, the object that we looked at previously, WASP-18, let's go back there for a second, is also most likely going to be the first object that we observe uh, colliding with its own star. Now, this is not happening anytime soon, but we think that this planet doesn't really have much time left before it essentially collides with the star. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to happen in the next few years, but uh, possibly within the next few thousand or maybe a million years, this planet will definitely collide with its parent star and uh, will add quite a lot of mass to it but at the same time will actually most likely initiate some insane reactions um, that will be very, very interesting to observe because we've never really seen a planet falling into its star before. 
And since this star is very similar to our sun, it's actually of particular interest to us because this might help us understand how our own solar system changed and also help us understand what happened to our own sun when it was much younger. And the third object here actually does have um, a star that is very, very similar to the young sun. This is WASP-43b and star known as WASP-43. This star is very sun-like and only about 500 million years in terms of age. Um, so basically here we could be looking at what our own solar system looked like many, many, many years ago. And it does have this unusual planet uh, that our own solar system doesn't have. And so here studying this particular uh, object might help us understand how um, our solar system evolved and how many of these objects, if they collided, may have actually turned into uh, planets like Earth and Venus. Because one of the current theories suggests that Earth, Venus, Mercury, and Mars were not really born from like asteroids or anything. They were actually created by a collision of several um, gas giant objects that were very, very close to our sun. Uh, it's still not really proven, but Studying these systems might help us understand if this is actually how they were formed. Now let's take a look at another one of these systems, and this one is called WASP-103. Um, and uh, once again, another planet very, very close to its parent star, and very, very, very hot as well. This one is one of the more recently discovered, uh, discovered back in 2014, and is extremely hot, very, very, very bright. And as you can see, its surface is glowing red. Now, um, I also wanted to show you a kind of a more visual representation of this in Universe Sandbox. So this is once again, WASP-18. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like. This is essentially what the star system looks like with the planet being extremely close to its parent star with temperatures reaching 5,000 degrees Celsius. Basically, this planet is actually hotter than some of the stars we've discovered. Uh, so it, it does have some tremendously powerful reactions on the surface and potentially has some elements on the surface that we can't even imagine. It, it, the actual reactions that happen on this particular planet are so strange and so weird, it's sort of beyond our understanding of science right now. Now, the last object I was going to show you is unfortunately not in Space Engine, but here's what it may look like using Universe Sandbox Square. This is K2141b. K2 stands for Kepler-2, this was the second part of Kepler mission. And once again, very, very similar system with an extremely um, close proximity of planet to its um, parent star. And like I mentioned, there's only five of these we've discovered so far, but we expect to find a lot more. But I guess the biggest question is, first of all, why is it that only certain types of stars seem to get them? All of the stars we've discovered were under 1.25 masses of our sun very similar to our sun as a matter of fact. And why is it that uh, these particular stars that are so similar to our sun have these planets, but our sun doesn't? Now, this by itself might not actually be a question about these stars, but the question about our own sun. Did our sun actually at some point have one of these and eventually basically swallowed it? Because we do expect many of these planets to be swallowed by their own star. Um, or did something else happen? Did they get kicked out by Jupiter? Did they uh, collide with each other and create planets that we have today? So there's a lot of questions that uh, definitely need to be answered by studying these objects because they allow us to understand our own solar system as well. But other than that, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about our galaxy, our universe, most importantly about our own solar system and about these unusual planets that are kind of like hot Jupiters, but are really known as ultra short period planets. Definitely its own class and its own sort of um, type of a planet, something that we don't have in our own solar system, but something that we may have had a long time ago. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye.